The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. TV50 Sports and New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association present Campbellpin Stars and Strikes. From Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham, featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from around New England. Gonna split it. Look at this. Yes! Oh, wow! <laughs> Right in the oh, pocket. Goodness. Oh, there was yeah. never a doubt about that one. Good looking ball. Yeah. And now your oak for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Sandy's Bowling Lanes in Wyndham for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And we are in our second week of this ladder to championship series. Last week, uh, Pat Pay kind of cruised along for two strings and then uh, threw a triple strike and won the match. Yeah, Rick Kuczecki won two out of three strings, mm -hmm. but unfortunately he lost the war. And uh, Pat threw the triple strike, and that was the difference in the match. All right, let's meet uh, our two bowlers for this week. First of all, you take a look at the ladder as it stands. Rick Kuczecki, the defeated bowler last week at the hands of Pat Pay. So now Pat moves along to face our number four seed, Bob Mazur. And let's get a look at Bob in slow motion. Uh, Bob has been with us before. In fact, he won a very dramatic match here uh, before. Right. He's a lighter championship uh, champion, and he defeated Jackie Ray uh, a little over a year ago now, uh, back in December of 85. So uh, he knows what it's all about, and he's in that final match. And this, this week, or this ladder, he's got to work his way up before he can get involved in that final match. Overall, Bob has been with us on three previous occasions, three matches. He is one and two in those three, including that ladder championship win over Jack Ray. Meanwhile, Pat Pay is now making his sixth appearance on the show. And in the previous five, he's won four of them, and he has been scoring very, very well. Well, I was, last week I mentioned I'd, if I was bowling Pat Pay, I'd, I'd like a 31-pin lead with one box to go, and that's uh, basically what he did last week. He just was rolling along and didn't seem, didn't hit his average either the first uh, two games. Uh, was having trouble with uh, with the wood shots and, and didn't, wasn't seem to get any breaks, and all of a sudden the roof fell in and uh, on poor Rick and threw the triple strike, meant the difference of the match. So you've got to go out and beat Pat Pay. We have $160 standing by in the bonus ball jackpot at the end of the show, and we have Bob Mazur and Pat Pay standing by for string number one after these messages. Don't go away. All right, Bob Mazur will get us started on lane 32. Bob will shoot at the 3-6 here he's, in the first. He's got a favorable piece of wood, though. If he's on the three pin, the wood should carry that four. Uh, went in between, and wait a minute. <laughs> right, the 3-4. That's what I meant. <laughs> you were just seeing if I was awake. That's right. I, you didn't catch me. I knew a little the too much four. Christmas cheer, I guess. <laughs> Hope everybody had a nice one. Christmas, that is. I know I was happy with all of my presents. Well, I was really happy with the screen door I got from my submarine, but I don't have the submarine yet. So. <laughs> it's one of my friends gave me that. I think it's from the Channel 50 crew. <laughs> no, the Hawaiian shirt was from them, I think. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Pat Pay, fresh off a 4-16 last week, and that's how we won it last week, with three strikes in a row. Just nudges that 10-pin over. Looks like he's going to be left with a 4-10. It's 
gonna go, there it goes. Back to live, two, four, five triangle for a spare on strike. Pat threw four strikes in the uh, third string last week, three of them consecutively. Anyone looking for a partner for this next shift? We got one up here at the counter. And Bob Mazur with another tough split. This time it's the 4-10. 4-10 on the four pin with the wood, snapping off the left sidewall. No. Nice try. Almost. Bob Mazur from Dover, works at Seacoast Beauty Supply in Dover, and qualified originally for this ladder series, where else, in Dover. Oh, still looking for his first mark. Close to a lob, but kept it on the lane for 11 through 4. Pat Pay. Watch oh, out. Good break there. <laughs> Missed the head pin and left the 5 pin. No, it's the head pin. <laughs> and covers it for a spare. Solid five pin. King pin. Nine fill and a 20 pin lead after three. And he's picking up where he left off last week. Just took him a little while to get started, that's all, last week. Right out of the shoot fast this week, though. Bob Mazur has been faced with some ugly shots here early. None worse than this one. Another good crowd here watching us tape. Uh, our next tape date, if you're people interested in coming down, is January 11th. Just come down and say hello to Doug and myself, and start about 9:30 in the morning and tape several shows. So come on down and say hello. trying to convert after really losing control of the first ball. target. Twenty five pin advantage for Pat through five. Pat carries an average of a one twenty nine, but here on Stars and Strikes through the first five shows in which he has appeared, he has averaged one thirty four. Not too shabby. The lowest triple he's had in five appearances was 382. With a best of 428. And Bob Mazur, knowing that he needs to start throwing marks or else Pat Pay will get away from him. Can't seem to get that extra pin. Again, splitting two, four, seven with the six pin, trying to split the two and the four. Still looking for that first mark. Don't forget our bonus ball contest comes up at the end of the show, and 
we are up to a hundred and sixty dollars you can use that forklift you got for Christmas to hold the box <laughs> I know it is getting heavy and there it is first mark for Bob Mazur and it's always a little tougher when it has to be a single Plus for five in the corner, three, five, six, nine, and ten. Pat mentioned uh, at the end of last week's show, Dan, that he made an adjustment, moved over a little bit to try and correct the problem he was having the first two strings last week. He also seems to be throwing the ball a little bit harder. I was going to mention the same thing. He made the triple strike adjustment. I know it well. <laughs> <laughs> Now he does seem to be putting a lot behind the ball this week. Oh, good mix in action there for a strike. A little light hit in the head pin this time. Just touches the head pin. See the head pin go right to the side wall and that does a lot of damage. Another piece coming off the right side. And Bob Mazur continues to have his problems. Six fill on the mark. This may go if he sets a piece of wood flying somewhere. Gonna go right at the 10 pin I think. Went in inside. I would have, well, hindsight. <laughs> Bob is one of many bowlers, it seems, who put that ball down right at the junction of the foul line and the right channel, it seems. You don't see many left-handers doing that on the other side, but a lot of right-handers do that. Bob converts for Nice shot. You can see the replay. Left side of the head pin, ball takes the head pin, goes down and clears out the four and seven. Head pin eventually takes that six. Another spare, 102 plus the ball. Bob's average is 120 and he'll add 10. That wakes the crowd up a little bit. 112 for Bob Mazur. Took him a little while to get on track, although he was all over that head pin with a f Just wasn't carrying the extra pin. And oh, a big one a from Pat Pay. That's a double. double. Deja vu here. No doubt about it. 1-3 pocket. 10 pin finally goes. Looking for the triple. Looks good. Wow. <sighs> Nothing touched that five. Solid nine pin drop. Another spare. That's off to a fantastic beginning. He's going to have another great string. He won 77 in the third string. He's one of those streak bowlers. He is tough when he gets going. Right now, he's just uh, firing from the hip. <laughs> Watch out. It'll be an eight fill. And a 158 for Pat Pay. And a 36, make it a 46 pin lead after one for Pat. Bob Mazur rescuing his string with a 112 with a couple of marks with the second string. And also the address for those postcards for the home contest after these messages. Well, Pat Pay is uh, feeling like a winner right now as uh, he opened up with a 158 after wrapping up last week's show with a 177. I guess it took two strings for Pat to figure out what to do here at Sandy's and now he's got it. <laughs> he's got his strike ball working now and the thing that's dangerous is he's throwing consecutively. Triple last week and a double with a solid nine drop this week. Oh, you take the last seven, uh, the last two strings. He's got seven strikes. Good ten. Take another look at that one. One and the seven. Would have gone without the wood, and it did. 
it's strange. It, you've been around this game so much, and you think you've seen all the shots. And a couple months ago, and I wish I could remember the bowler now. Nice spare for Pat. He's watching a, a league bowler in Concord. He threw his first ball, and he removed the one pin and the seven pin by hitting the seven pin first. Wow. <laughs> Oh, nice. big strike for Bob Major, and a big eruption from all of his fans here. There you see the replay, and actually strike last last game. Yes, I wish I give credit to that bowler, but I can't remember his name. I can't remember who it was, but he he hit the head uh, head seven pin flush. The ball went straight up in the air, came back, and knocked the head pin down, and touched nothing else. So he ended up with one in the seven by hitting the seven pin first. Wow. <laughs> Now the important thing is, <laughs> this sounds like a golf story. Well, I hit a great five iron within two feet of the cup, but yeah. then the question is, did you make the putt? <laughs> yeah, missed the hole in one by four strokes. <laughs> <laughs> so now the question is, I guess after that one seven drop, did he make the spare? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> after we get done laughing. <laughs> No, it wasn't me. I know what you're thinking, Zach. <laughs> Ooh, tough break for Pat Pay after a six fill on the spare. And three, five, six, and ten, and he's heavy on the three pin. Remove just the three. Pat Pay with a 46 pin lead coming in for this second string, and oh, a backdoor strike on the two pin. Again, he was light in that head pin, but he's in that one three pocket, and you watch these pins mix. Wow. Bob Mazur just clipping the head pin and leaves himself with the two seven. He covers, nice shot. See the replay of that. Bob had to go for a re-rack over on lane 31. A couple of pins fell inadvertently. Good looking ball. Whoa, up and over. Cluster of five in the left-hand corner. Two, four, five, seven, and eight. Trying to keep pace with Pat Pay. That's a tall order right now. Well, he's opposite a strike here in the fourth, and Bob will be open, and we will pause right here. Bob Mazur with a 52 through four, and Pat Pay will be working on a strike when we come back to Stars and Strikes after these words. Pat Pay working on yet another strike, his fourth of the match. And we're only halfway through. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I can count by twos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Yes. Wow. He uses the left side wall effectively. He's heavy on the two pin into the four, off the wall, clears the six. For spear on strike and look out. Seems to pay is on a roll. No pun involved there. <laughs> He's really uh, throwing the ball with some authority. 71 at the turn. This string. Just missing the object, which was the two. Opening game of 158. Meanwhile, Bob Mazur seems to have found the mark a little bit here in the second string. No pun intended there either. <laughs> Two, four, and seven. Now the first game he was, he tripped the six for a spare leaf here. Ah, it's heavy on the two. First game he wasn't getting that extra pin, leaving just the three. Oh. Pin picking there, dropped out the two pin, then the four. 
Well, if you're Bob Mazur, the way you have to look at this, Dan, coming into the second string, 46 pins down, is maybe try and chop the lead in half in this second string if you can. And Bob is just not putting the marks together as yet. Half wish to left. Boy. Oh. Now he'll really have to fight to get out of this box. Well, let's see what he elects to do. Go for the 10 box. Yes, he's going to go for them all. I think that's being that many down. That's what you've got to do now. You've got to go for every pin. So a tough six box. And Pat Pay's lead is now 60. The winner, of course, this week. Pat Pay leaves a solid six pin. We're going to have to have that piece of loose wood out in front checked too by Dennis Noel. And uh, that gives us a moment to remind you that the winner of today's show will move along next week to face John Burke from Newmarket, who will be making his first appearance on the program. He's our number three seed in this series. The wood was okay, and Pat went around it. Uh, it was it was way out in front, but it was in the legal limit from the playing uh, from the plate. But a pad elected to go by it, hit the other piece of wood, and another oh, strike. Boy. Unbelievable. 158 opening game, and he's well on his way to another tremendous second game. See the strike there. Hey, and a strike nice for spot. Bob Mazur. What he's got to do is throw a few strikes in a row here. The uh, runner-up today will receive a check for $50, a runner-up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, and a copy of Jim Fairhurst's new book, The Light Side of Candlepin Bowling, courtesy of John Grapponi Ford Incorporated in Concord. And speaking of John Grapponi Ford, our next ladder championship series, which will begin on January 25th, 1987 will be the John Graponi Ford Championship. I have added prize money, $1,000 to the latter winner, and uh, we're very excited about that, having the folks from John Graponi Ford down visiting with us for those five shows. Charlie Finley will be here, and of course they've been big supporters of the program. Pat Pay, 20 more. Ooh, wow. 19 more. <laughs> wow, 140. Needs this one to surpass his first game. He's on it. It's fair. 150 and a ball. Needs nine to better his first game. Pat Pay on lane 31. Watch out. There it is. Watch out. 159. Mercy. <laughs> and a handshake from Bob Mazur. <laughs> Bob didn't even want to go up and finish the second no. string. He shook Pat's hand. He was going <laughs> to sit back down. He thought he was all done. <laughs> Mentioned John Capone and Charlie Finley and crew from Graponi 4, they do a lot of community work too, and they're involved with the Saying No to Drug program with Bob Tewksbury, and we salute those kind of people. They're doing a fantastic job out there for us. Great to have them sponsoring the next ladder championship. And the bowlers will be thankful too, because there'll be a lot of extra money on the line. Exactly. So if you're in the Concord area, stop in to see Charlie Finley at John Graponi Ford. Tell him that we were talking about him on the show. He'll like that's, that. That's right. <laughs> Bob Mazur for the one three seven. It's just not happening for Bob today. Be a nine and a one fourteen. And it'll be big numbers for Pat Pay at the end of two. Three seventeen. To Bob Mazur's 226, we'll be back for the third and final string after these words.
Well, Bob Mazur has a pretty large task ahead. <coughs> and that's the kind of day it's been for Bob. Pin. Bob has five marks. Two of them have been strikes, but he has not put two marks together yet. And he spares in the second. Pat Pay, on the other hand, has put plenty of marks together. He already has 13 marks in the match, including five strikes. I think it's six. Did I say five? <laughs> Correction. Make it six. This just in. Film at 11. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if you take Pat's last string last week and his first two this week, it's just a 494 triple. Unbelievable. We hit the goal pulse here. 7, 10. Piece of, a couple pieces of wood in front of the seven. I just got a feeling it's going to go. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Got that wood moving, but went in front of that 10 pin. I uh, pulled that one to the left a little bit. Got a good break. Be an eight fill. One in the seven left. You know, he's not mathematically out of it, but he just can't afford to have any open boxes. Here on down. Nice shot. And I'd say safely he needs a few strikes in there. Head pin, ball goes off the head pin into that seven. And Bob's starting to put it together a little bit here now with another eight drop and a spare leave. Yeah, another spare for Bob. Three in a row. Pat Pay with a huge lead, of course, and uh, as you said, Dan, Bob not mathematically out of it, but he's in a slump. <laughs> See Pat Punch at uh, such a rarity the last few weeks. Any questions, we ask you to please come up immediately. Seven box. <laughs> that may be his lowest box in the last two weeks. Well, he had a seven in the first string last week. But other than that, nice ball. People sitting at home saying, wow, that Doug Brown, he can just remember every box from last week. <laughs> it's Doug a gift. Does, <laughs> yeah. Doug does a fine job. He's, he's got all the stats from every bowler who ever appeared on the show, the strings, and he does his homework. And I know, Dan, that you've never appeared on the show. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dandy at Sandy's. 36 and a spare up for Pat Pay in the fourth and Bob Mazur at 46 with a spare up and we'll be back to finish it out here on Stars and Strikes after these words. Well, in this holiday season, how appropriate. Dennis Noel is our lob line judge. Carol Downey keeping the big scoreboard as always, and Bob Mazur working on a spare in the fourth. 
Disappointing three, Phil. Get over for Watch Bob. out. Seven pin will stick around. Dennis is going down and check that one piece of wood that's rolled out. Close look and he says it's okay. And Bob gets by it for the 10. Bob says, thank goodness, I just want to get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> Got a tiger by the tail today in the name of Pat Pay. Done nothing more but throw a 158 and come back with a 159. Well, the outcome is certainly not in doubt, but there are there is the, the matter of records that could be broken for Pat Pay, and we'll get into that in just a second. We're punching it up on a computer now. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Stars and Strikes computer, we'll punch it right up and see what kind of records we're gonna go after today. 10 for Bob. Pat Pay now comes up in the fourth working on a spare. The uh, highest triple that we've ever had here on Stars and Strikes was a 482 by Peter Flynn. Peter who? <laughs> and I'll tell you, if Pat Pay <laughs> keeps getting breaks like that, he's going to have a shot at it. He needs to roll a 166 to beat that high triple. You see the replay, that one two pot, at least got the five and seven for a second. Five rolls over a piece of wood, clear out the seven, and almost a double. I think the record's going to fall, Doug. Well, just with that strike, Pat has tied another record, which is the most strikes in that was, his, that was his seventh strike in the match. And that is the ninth time that we've had a bowler throw seven strikes in one match, but we've never had, Pat has four more chances to do that. Man is sizzling. I'd reach over there and pat him on the back, but I afraid it'd burn my hand. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Get over for Bob. Yes, it will. Nice shot for Bob. Two pin with a piece of wood. Just misses the three. Wood comes swinging around to clear it out. Spread eagle spare. Nice shot, Bob. Bob has to take consolation in whatever he can here <laughs> this week because Pat Pay is going to move on. And another Bob. one. Never give up. Never give up Bob Mazer. That's what they call him. Splits the one and the two and put a little clinic here on spare making. But the man of the hour is Pat Pay. Zooming in on a few records on our show. This is on a spare, just a five fill. Pat, of course, is already assured. In fact, he has already gone over to the 400 mark, which is his third 400 series on the program. Steve Vadney, far and away the record holder in that department, he has seven. Well, he's going to have to have a double strike if he's going to topple Peter Flynn's high three record for the Stars and Strikes. He's rolling at 130 clip right now. That was close to a lob. Yeah, very close. He's starting to overthrow a little bit now. Nice try. Well, it may go yet. Behind uh, Peter Flynn's 482 come a 481 by Rick Farwell and a 466 by Steve Vadney just about uh, six or seven weeks ago. Oh, boy. No luck, Bob. 4, 7, 10. waiting for that piece of wood in the middle to settle. It could help him if it stops in the right spot. You bang the four into the seven or play the cap of the wood. He tried to get onto the cap and have the ball take the 10 and hopefully the wood take the four and seven, but 
difficult, real difficult shot. 121 for Bob with one box remaining. He'll be up over 350 for three. But not nearly good enough today. A nine for a 130 and a 356 for Bob Mazur. And now we will just see how high Pat Pay can push this three string total. Needs to throw strikes for the record and that will do it as far as the overall record. But he'll still be right up there. That was his 18th mark of the match. Pretty tough to beat a fellow when he throws more marks than open boxes in a three-string match. And Pat will stay at seven strikes for the match. So again, for the ninth time, we've had a bowler throw seven strikes in a match, but never eight. And it'll be a six box for Pat, but he's got a little grin on his face because <laughs> even though he lost that last string by one, he had things well in hand. It will be an outstanding 446 for Pat Pay and a 356 for Bob Mazur. And we'll be back to chat with both bowlers and check into that $160 bonus ball jackpot right after these messages. Don't go away. Back at Sandy's in Wyndham, and Pat Pay once again uh, has put together a 400 triple, even better than last week. Oh, he was sizzling today. I mean, what, what can you do? 150, what, eight, uh, 157, 158, or 158, 159. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty tough for anyone to come back when you get two big strings like that thrown at you. And uh, give it credit to Bob Mazur. He just kept plugging along, made some nice shots toward the end, which uh, most bowlers would have just given, thrown the towel in. Credit to Pat Pay too, because last week uh, after the first two strings, it looked like he was really struggling. He was not he was not getting the leaves for spares that he would have liked. He made an adjustment, and now all of a sudden, uh, he's put four great strings together. Well, if, uh, the adjustment's what he's done. I'd take that adjustment and I'd file it right in my pocket. <laughs> and I wouldn't say anything to anyone because he's been bowling super since he said he made that adjustment two weeks ago, uh, going to that third game. And since then, he's thrown a triple strike and he set a record for strikes uh, with us in this game, uh, this match. So. Uh, he's going to be the bowler to beat, I think, in the entire ladder. All right, well, let's chat with both bowlers. First of all, our runner-up this afternoon, Bob Mazur. Bob, come on up. We have some uh, loot here for you. We have a runner-up check for $50 and also uh, Jim Fairhurst's book, The Light Side of Candlepin Bowling, also the runner-up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company. There's, there's not a heck of a lot you can do uh, a guy who throws 446. Uh, Pat's one of the finer bowlers in the state, and you can attest that to his average that he carries. And uh, once he got on a roll today, I thought the record was in trouble. Mm -hmm. They had, had a shot of going down because he was throwing a lot of strikes. And uh, he's that type of ball. He's very explosive. And uh, you just uh, you can't let up against Pat. He can bury you in a hurry. And obviously he did that to me today. And you just seem to have one of those days when nothing really was breaking the way it could have been. Nah, the ball, I just didn't throw that good a ball. I was, wasn't as happy as I should be with my ball. And I was off the head pin and it's one of those days you just fight to come back and hopefully next time I'll do a better job. Well we're sure you will be back. It was good to see you again and, yep. uh, and we appreciate it. Have a good holiday. Thank you very much. All right, Bob Mazur from uh, Dover, our runner up and now it's time for Pat Pay once again to uh, step up on lane 31 and see if we can't uh, get a winner in our uh, jackpot here which is now $160. And Pat's going to give somebody a break here and not throw a strike. <laughs> So let's see if we can get a match on this six drop. And uh, well, we have a covered bridge from Jackson, New Hampshire, and not a match. Very close, though, for Gail Weber 
from Londonderry. Gail's guess was a seven. Thanks for the uh, postcard, Gail. You'll be getting a uh, TV50 NHCBA desk pen set as a consolation prize, and that means we'll be going up another 10 to $170 next week, and this man will also be with us next week. Uh, I didn't probably didn't think you could do any better than last week, but there you go. Well, <laughs> love, love to have anything, and I had it all. The, the first two strings, uh, it just seemed like everything was going for you. Yeah, I had a lot of light hits, and I got the strikes out of it. And lucky. Well, now uh, you get two in a row, and uh, have you ever bowled against uh, John Burke John. before? He'll be here next week. I know John, too. All right. Well, we'll be looking forward to that match, Pat. Again, a great job, and we'll see you next week. Alrighty, All right. Pat Pay from Summersworth with two wins in a row now, both with 400 triples, first a 416 and now a 446. And uh, John Burke will come in next week. We'll get a final look here this week at the uh, ladder and uh, take a look at what's happening on next week's program. It'll be Pat Pay against our number three seed, John Burke. Well, John Burke was in the crowd today watching this match, so he knows what he's going to be up against. And uh, did he say he was lucky? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a small amount of skill involved. He just bowled super today, and John Burke's going to uh, have his hands full next week, I'm sure. John with that 652 roll-off score to finish as the number three seed, as you see there. And two weeks from today, Mike Brutzos will be here, the number two seed. And then the survivor of all that will meet Bill Gover, Jr., our number one seed in the ladder championship match uh, three weeks hence. And, of course, we want to remind you, as uh, Gail Weber did from Londonderry, you want to send in your postcards. Make sure they get in the big box here, which is getting bigger all the time and uh, tougher for Dan to lift. But we have uh, $170 now in the jackpot for next week's show. So until next week, uh, Happy New Year. That's right. Uh, we're running out of time here in 1986. So uh, have you uh, made any New Year's resolutions uh, that you could share with us at this particular point in time? Uh, <laughs> Jeez, I've got a list of <laughs> I don't think we have time. <laughs> okay. All right, I, I take your word for it on that. For uh, Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, have a happy new year, everybody, and we'll see you next Sunday at 12 noon here at Sandy's. Bye-bye.